I live, yet not I that live. I live, yet not I that live. I live, yet not I that live. There is life eternal within me. Oh. I live, yet not I that live. I live yet not I that live. I live yet not I that live. There is life eternal within me. Oh. I live yet not I that live. I live yet not I. I live yet not I that live. There is life eternal within me. Oh, yes I live. Yes I live. Yes I. Live. There is life eternal within me. Oh, I live yet not I that live. There is life eternal within me, oh. I live yet not I that live. I live the glorious King of Israel, hail your name. Forever, oh magnificent room of Israel, hail your name is great forever, oh glorious King of Israel, hail your name is great forever, oh magnificent room of Israel, hail your name is great forever. You reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the wisdom before time begun. You reign forever, your name is ever great. You are the wisdom before time begun. Forever, your name is ever great. The wisdom before time. Yes, you are the wisdom before time be gone. You reign forever. You are the wisdom. Felesone mama veridido boca. Let's pray. Yes. Yeah. 
the reason why you must pray is that that day you give an excuse that you are too weak or that you don't like the person leading prayer that's the day death started but you don't know papa said it's it is a departure it's very slim just like a woman that takes in for the first three months you might not know but it's there it's there when you will know by the time you find out you can't take away the baby you have to bet it and death sin will follow after sin what will happen death how can i say that i have christ and the bible said that he that has christ has life in him how is it that i find out a, a foreign law in my map it means that i have given satan an opportunity to 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 install something that god did not plan from the original I refuse. Papa said the only antidote to death is life. I will again life today. But adventure, heaven will hear me and set me free from this yoke of death. Who can help me? Who can help me? I am a pie. 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 I am a Oh, 
wondered how is it that we have dead churches do you think any church started off and they want to be a dead church 
I believe that many of those churches started on fire. They were hitting it. They were hitting it in word, in prayer, in fasting. The bodies were there. They wanted to take the word for Jesus, but suddenly, one day they came to pray, but they did not ascend. They left it like that. They managed. The next day, because they have already introduced a system that is not of God, they pushed it, pushed it. They saw that heaven is not opening. Like they needed to push more, but they, they camped. Before you know, it became a culture. They meet every day, but they don't touch God. They become false. You come to preach Bible study, to teach us Bible study, you flowed. You did not study. Omar, you can flow without studying. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. You don't know that you have introduced a strange, a strange system in your life. Before you know, you begin a Christian, begin a walk with God that God is void. You start walking in the flesh. Before you know, we now have a church that we can call that church. Nobody planned to be dead. But suddenly, something in them told them that they have mastered God. That even without hitting, they can do it. Something in them after that. Even if they don't ascend that, that something is happening in their life. Something have, have educated them in the way of the flesh. That if they don't study, that they can find revelation. They can say one or two, one or two. And people will start telling them. I will not, I will not allow myself to get to that point. If I see, it's possible the members can be there, but the man of God still has life. He still has life. Oh, he's touching his secret place. Life is flowing. But I've gotten so used to God. I've mastered him. I, I'm not the master of God. I, I'm the one that tell him how to flow and when to flow. He will shift for me. He will not say, go ahead. Then we now have dead churches. Hold mighty programs, but then. But believe me, the Holy Ghost will not allow you to get to that point. He will keep pointing it. That there is another law in your members that is warring against the law of your mind. Trying to bring you into captivity. Will you allow yourself to come into captivity? Will you allow yourself, brethren? See, the ball is in your court. You choose to be in captivity or you choose the law of life. Or you choose the law of freedom that God is offering you today. I engage the law of life. I refuse Satan to pound me. I keep lying to me that I am master God. I am Aliakatakai. Oh, Baba, 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 I install life again. 
and it says that you inject me with life oh, in my secret place from Kai Papa Palia. No, 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 no. There's something happen. You are the quickness spirit. I know you can do it. Up higher, 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 up 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 Papaya, 
Don't give up on me. Holy Ghost, this is the song. Your mercy, 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 Son of David, mercy. This is on me. Your mercy, 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 the Son of David, mercy. Ah, is Brother, once the life of God is there, there is hope. Mercy, mercy, there is hope. Mercy, there is hope for a soul that is caught up. And is sent from water. And I, 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 I. Oh. Your mercy, mercy, mercy. Yeah. O son of David, insist on me, insist on me, Holy Ghost, insist on me, till I look like you, Holy Ghost, insist on me, insist on me, Holy Ghost, insist on me, oh. Till I live like you, Holy Ghost, insist on me. Insist on me, Holy Ghost, insist on me, oh Jesus. Till I look like you, Holy Ghost, insist on me. Ah. Insist on me, Holy Ghost. He sees on me, oh, he's a cry. Till I look like you, Holy Ghost, he sees on me. He sees on me, Holy Ghost, he sees on me, Fokata. Ah, Till I look like you, Holy Ghost, he sees on me. He sees on me, Holy Ghost. He sees on me. My name is Chibike. Till I look like you, Holy Ghost. He sees on me. Ah, okay. He sees on me, Holy Ghost. He sees on me. Can we interact with this song? Till I look like you. Holy Ghost, this is on me. Don't give up on me, Holy Ghost. This is on me. All over that till I look like you. Hey, 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 hey. Ah. This is on me, Holy Ghost. This is on me. Oh. He sees on me, Holy Ghost. He sees on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. You can pray. Don't give up on me, oh. 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 Fatali. Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. Just the same Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. I say, Levele Medi. Fama ma pobe lia barane sosi. Frede ma ma kadi ne pobe. Don't give up on me, oh. 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 I feel like. Don't give up on me, oh. Don't give up on me, oh. I am a celebrity. 
Don't give up on me, oh, Jesus. Don't give up on me. Oh. He sees on me. Respond in prayer. Respond in prayers. It's not a song to dance to. It's a song to, to make decisions. Yes, through me. God through me. Open me up. Do a surgical walking till I see as you see. Yes, through me. God through me. Open me up. Do your surgical work in me till I live as you live. Oh, Jesus. Pierce through me. God through me. Open me up. Do your surgical work. Jesus pierced through me, cut through me, open me up, do a surgical walking till I see as you see. I'm crying, Jesus. I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm not living as I ought. I'm not acting as I ought. There is a demand on my heart, that there is a demand on my life. I'm not living as I ought. Yes, through me, God through me, open me up. I want to see. I see as you see. Oh, yes, through me, God through me, open me up. So Zafila Kakaparia, Rapapam Boka Tete, That lost, cut through me, open me up to a surgical walk. I can see lost, I can see pride, I can see self glory, I can see so many things. Can you, can you, can you bring out your blade? Remove the dross, 
remove the chaff where is bring fire safe baba patikaya Jesus, without the sound. Let's sing it together. Kubi na chogi, sing it to him. Nani ki ka obi na chogi, obi na chogi, obi na chogi, obi na chogi. We sing it three more times. Di ka wele na chomiri ogangu o. Kubim na opela na sama na kofe fe sa sisi na negi Jesus na negi na negi ka o obim na chogi o obim na chogi o obim na chogi o a chogi o makati hey let's go one more time di ka wele na chomi ogangu o. Kubim na chogi Onye we Just the keyboard Nanigi ka obim na chogi 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 Nanigi Buike mburo tamo Nani gi kanye woro mo mo oloba Nani gi ka obi na cho obi na cho gyo obi na cho gyo acho mi be. Nani gi buike. Tamo, nani ki kanye wo rowe mo akaso se fele na mabora vadata aso se fina na kade abri na fela sasisa aso sa fina ka apura katina zefe bakate apu kateka le zasa se fe de mapali uakatina skapo. Ayala kaya Kobim na cho, na nigi kobim na cho, na cho mi be. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I will quickly have our seats. Please, if you have testimony, make it out to the front. Call on our brother, anointed, anointed Soluchi, Jasper Chidechuku, anointed. Praise God. 
Um, my name is um, Anointed Solochi. I want to thank God for his mercy and his grace upon I and my family. Um, last week, Thursday, my, one of my kids was sick. So I called, I told my wife to join me later with them. So I sent for to go and get them. Later words, why the why daddy was ministering, um, I was carrying my daughter, the first one. All of a sudden, her eyes is went in, what I've never seen before. And then she began to act strange. And I'm not medically wise, so I don't know what that one meant. So the only thing I did was I rose up. Um, one or two ministers came and joined me, and before we know it, the girl stopped breathing, and then just freezed. But to God be the glory, at the end of all things. Though later we went to hospital, and we found out that it was um, medically inclined. But I thank God that at the end of all things, um, the doctors told me that they couldn't, they can't be able to detect that same thing again. That may be, when I explained what happened, the doctor said that this is what it should have been. But the way it is now, he's not seen anything wrong with the girl. And they have checked all around, and the girl is perfectly fine. So God be the glory. And we put our hands together for Jesus. How many of us remember the, lady, the, the girl that was conversing last week? Yes. That's a mighty testimony. Praise God. Jasper. Pre Praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Jide Chuku Jasper, as you can know. Uh, I want to, I want to thank God for, for the success of the uh, Abba Apostolic Invasion. Uh, Satan has resisted us in that city. When I mean resistance, is uh, is, I, I learned warfare in that city. I learned warfare by the kind of resistance that Satan has brought on our way. But this apostolic invasion made it easy that it seems as if Satan never existed. You don't get what I'm saying. I mean, the way the, way the apostolic invasion ran, it was as if the princes and chief powers in Abba never existed. It was, oh, wait, wait, wait. It was as, praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we need the briefing. When they send you an assignment, Pastor, come and sit here. Come and sit here. When they send you an assignment, sit, sit on one of these. When they send you an assignment, if it's the, the U.S. or whatever, when you come back, there is what they call debriefing. Is it not true? I'm here to debrief you. Oh, yeah. Start. Why do you leave the man of God and show him me? Huh? Focus on him. Leave me. My voice is enough. Are you not hearing me? Oh yeah, man of God. So, don't start from where and beat you people. There was one time I came to minister with my red suit. What I suffered that day. <laughs> hey, there are a few places I've gone to minister that I suffered like I suffered in about. Ask him now. We even went with Buddhas at one time. <laughs> hey, let's leave this story. And many other things. So tell us what happened now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, there was a place that we used to stay for service. I remember one of those days. It was a seven hours prayer meeting. I invited Lotana. So we gathered for the meeting. Uh, usually I used to go and join the church for, for, uh, for cleanups. And then I used to go to their churches so that I can be showing my face and be telling the pastor that, uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to be staying there. So it was a Saturday, and then we were done cleaning the place. Everything was set. It was a few minutes to the meeting, and they sent us away. It bittered my heart. I called Papa. I was waiting for Papa to say, to speak to the heaven so that they will allow us to stay there. 
Papa said, Papa said, <laughs> oh my God. What did I say? Let me remember. I've forgotten. Continue. <laughs> Papa said, stay outside and use your voice. <laughs> Somebody say after me, stay outside. Yeah. Use your voice. Some of you are not well trained. You are not hard. If anything shifts, you shake. If they take mic, you can't pray. You can't teach. You can't preach. If there is no sound, you can't ascend. And many people here, if you remove sound, their prayer life go. Continue, continue. So uh, we had to stay outside. The sun was too much. We couldn't bear it, but thank God for the training that Papa has given us. We don't back up. So we kept on praying. We prayed to an extent that it started raining on us. Outside, as you, um, I mean, the environment, they were looking at us and then they were mocking us. But that was one of the sections that the Holy Ghost moved mightily. I mean, everybody that came for that meeting was literally baptized. So after that meeting... Now, listen to what he said. Listen, you didn't hear it. Son beat them till it was terrible. In the same meeting, rain also beat them till it was terrible. Has Satan not tried this worst? Continue. So after that meeting, Papa literally stopped our meeting. He said, no meeting till you get your venue. That one became a warfare too. I, that, was when, that was when I literally knew all places in about trying to find a home. <laughs> Some of the times I would trek and get tired, I would find a place and I, I say, what is all this? Thinking that Papa would make it easy, he came to Abba one day and said, seem as if God didn't send you to Abba. <laughs> <laughs> continue, continue. He said, if after, he said he's giving me three months that if, that, if after three months I'm not able to get her, he will take it that Papa didn't, uh, that God didn't send me to this city and then he will send me to another place. He gave me a serious body. That was when I went back. I said, no more food. I was praying, nothing less than six hours in the morning, six hours in the night without food. I took it personal. And then that was... Are you seeing how people are trained? Yes, Apostle, how do you get your boys? This is how. No, come on, tell me, these your boys are like you. That's how. Eh? So it's after me, that's how. That's how. In the night time of your prayer, you can't pray in the morning, you can't pray in the afternoon. Say you can't do night vigil. Or you are praying the day. You can't pray in the day. You can't pray any time. So you want to, you want to, you want to be like who? Some of these young men reaching out to us on the internet, say they want something, whatever. You tell them, some of you have given them your numbers. Some of the time I give them your number, I give them Chibika, I give them Chimo. Have you not noticed that some of them, if you tell them to fast, they can't fast. But they will be, wait, they will be waiting for something to happen. They can't pray, they can't fast. What they want is magic. There is no magic. You have seen it. Some of you, since you came here, you have seen that there is no magic. We have prayed how many times today since you came? The reason why I have not honored that meeting, I want you to see how the labor works. You know magic, you want to fly, see a post, you know one pray. If you come, you'll be hanging at the back. At least you need to appreciate the labor so that the day you become reasonable, you know what the land responds to. Tell us about how they attacked your health. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, that one is a terrible one. No? <laughs> okay, uh, it actually happened. Uh, it started with waist pain. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then a slight headache. It was in an evening, I remember. So in that night, it was as if... What is it? Uh? In that night, it was as if the whole... If the whole Abba was, uh, I was literally carrying the whole Abba on my head. Jesus Christ. I didn't know how I didn't die that night, but it was too terrible. And then after that time, I noticed my health started deteriorating. I can't even stand. If I stand, it's as if, it's as if something is leaving me. That's how I used to feel. I can't even stand well. All, all kinds of things. God helped me. They brought me back to this place. Some of the times if I'm preaching, it will seem as if something, there is a heavy something on my heart. I'll literally be, be falling, like I'm teaching, but I'm, I'm literally falling down. That was how terrible that thing is. But God helped me. I came back to this place, and I was resuscitated. Praise the Lord. 
So back to my testimony before Papa told me to say this one. Do you have where you can be resuscitated? Yes, now. You have to have your God zone. Why you come, put your head, receive a million dollars, and go back. Continue. So uh, when we finally got to that hall, Papa pushed it and said that we need to, uh, we need to, we need to host an apostolic invasion and set and rose again. Let me start with finance. When the apostolic invasion was literally closed, it was only hundred thousand that we had. How do you run an apostolic invasion that did nothing less than you know now, nothing less than two point five and all of that? And then aside that one, you people know about that warfare that rose that time and. It's as if all of the whole people we are against have the nothing, 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 nothing and all of that. <laughs> but what happened this time? It was so much that one of my people sent me a message and said he saw witches, they were literally crying. When it has to do with the finance, by one month, by one month we have raised nothing less than almost two million. <laughs> no, you don't know what is two million. Ask, where is Brochik, are you? <laughs> Some of you will not appreciate this. Don't worry, you are going to go on the field. And you understand. Some brothers here did not know what we are doing until we send them to the field to buy seat to sit. To buy microphone that people will use. I know how long Enugu people use that their moribund microphone. Used it, used it, used it until I invoke supernatural power before they changed it. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's, it's not as if, if you are in Oko, as soon as you are starting, they start with equipment or decorate everything for you and all that. One million. Huh. Now, this is aside. As a young pastor, once God open door, open door to the point that you can have one million like this, leave it. You can't go back. You don't open. Even if warfare come, if you persist, you will win. Yes, 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 yes. That one million is continue. It, what it means is continue. Are you getting the point? Yes, it's just like if you start, and once you try and your member pass 12 people, you have started ministry. 12 consistent people. Not 12 down, 12 or more. You have started. You can't go down, except you become careless. Are you seeing it now? Uh, that's the way it works. Continue. So I remembered one uh, prayer meeting that I invited. Uh, I invited Dennis and Bulldozer. So, so when they came, they saw that the sound was literally bad. So they were gingering the man, gingering the man, gingering the man. I was, I was begging them in my spirit. <laughs> you don't know why. The reason why I was begging them is that we didn't even have the money to pay complete. Are you getting what I'm saying? We don't have complete money to pay the instrument man. And we are changing the man, changing the man. So that night till the next morning that we pay that man, the money was literally not there. I couldn't even sleep. <laughs> you don't know what in like. I was, oh God, how are we going to pay this money? How are we going to pay this money? But the way God did this this time, like the invasion was running. Me too, I was running. Like there was money to deal with everything that God needed us to deal with. Yes, he is correct. I can testify. Hmm? Abba put me in a first class hotel. Clap for If you want to clap, clap. Yes. I've gone to Abuja Apostolic Invasion, Lagos Apostolic, Enugu Apostolic. I put it to you. You have not put me in that kind of place. As much as you people have tried. That's how much the place is. Yes. Let's clap for Pastor Boy. <laughs> that place, I asked them the price. Calculate all the money you have paid for that other place you put me. When I came two times, all the days, times two times I came. Yes, now. 
don't want to call it so that you people will not be pursuing vanity. And all that. Continue. Praise the Lord. So, uh, while the invasion was going to uh, support, we are still coming. But finally, I want, actually want to thank God basically uh, about my heart. So, Satan, I've seen, uh, thank God for what Daddy taught us. We don't organize meetings based on just to organize meetings. Before the meeting starts, we use many times and many hours and many months to prepare for it. So, Satan, I've seen how our hearts, we are literally set in both fasting, prayer, Bible reading, study, all hours of prayer and all of that. And Satan, I've seen how much we were ready to maximize the season. So <laughs> Satan struck my health. Seriously. The way Satan, I couldn't, and the way he did it so bad was that he struck me while he was in the period of exam. So his intent was that the invasion is going to come, but I will not be, is either I'm in the hospital or I will not be too strong in my body to to do what I need to do in the vision. And then when he has to do with my exam, I will be too weak to read for my exam and then not prepare for my exam. It was too strong. Even, even while I was going back for the 24 hours, I was throwing up. It was only God that made me not to vomit. <laughs> and, but the way Papa has trained us, what I needed to do is that I found one uh, nurse because we used to fast six to six. I told them that mine will be six to eight. So I closed in the night and eat one. So when he started, I didn't stop my fasting. What I did was that I asked the nurse, I said, is there any drug somebody can be taking in the night? He said, yes. I said, okay. So what I used to do is that after my fasting by eight, I would take the drugs and then we kept on pushing. So what I want to say is that in all of this, God helped me. I was able to be strong and then the invasion ran and God helped us. All glory be to God. Amen. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Amen. And all that. Um in the bias, you know, kri kri can a book was a hey Megan. Yes. I know that if I knew better doesn't really fully understand the meaning of this. Nonetheless, you are not the audience of this my statement. Possibly the audience of this my statement might not be human beings. Bro. That Abba is not that hard, though. It's not hard. It's just that the laborers are not much. And the people that are doing real labor, they gather the work of many people and loaded on them. The more laborers that we rise, pia, 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 pia. the land has heritage. Strike, strike. There is a lot of man to hanging everywhere looking for who to collect. Just that people don't want to pay the price. If the patriarchs that walked that land wake up and see what people are doing there as a means of bringing down God, they will weep. Because even in their weakest strength, they didn't walk like that. If you continue this way, the land will owe you. Like, you know, a land can owe a man. The land will now owe you. From now, now, the kind of prayer you will now be praying is, where is the good of this land? Are you getting the point? Mm -hmm. Don't be, if you go to, but don't be speaking as if uh, you are one of the young pastors. You are just trying to stay. No, no. After this invasion, the sign is that that one has shifted. Hmm? Yes, I'm telling you. And if anybody come and say, who? They will curse him from heaven. Not human being. They will curse the person. The people that are wise will just avoid you. So, you are past that level of warfare. Thank you. Praise the Lord. One more person. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a testimony. Uh, I had an accident last week. I had an accident last week with my bike, but I want to return all the glory to Jesus. I, nobody died, and I, I did not have like serious injury. I want to return all the glory to Jesus. <laughs> we put our hands together for Jesus. 
I pray that the testimonies will come on in Jesus' name. Good evening, church. Good evening, church. It's time for our Bible reading. Let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 6. Thank you, Daddy, for this opportunity to read the Word of God with your people. Romans chapter 6. Please make sure your neighbor has his or her Bible open before him or her. Report to the person immediately for rescue mission. Amen. Amen. If you are there, say amen. amen. All right. Verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Can we all shout verse 2? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Verse 3, I read. Know ye not that, know ye not that so many of us as we are baptized into Jesus Christ, we are baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptizing him into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, verse 6, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. Verse 7, can we all read? For he that is dead is freed from sin. You are not sure. Can we read it again? For he that is dead is free from sin. Verse 8, now if we be dead with Christ, we believe we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Verse 11. Likewise reckon ye also yourself to be dead indeed unto sin. But alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. That you shall obey it in the lust thereof. Neither ye ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness and so sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members are instruments of righteousness unto God. Or verse 14, can we all read it? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under the grace. Read it with conviction. Can we go again? For sin shall not have dominion over you, for... I, but under the grace. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under the grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which we are which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Hallelujah. Verse 19, I speak after the manner of men because of iniquity of your flesh. For see, for as you have yielded your members, servants to uncleanliness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants, to righteousness unto holiness. Verse 20, for when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye done in those things where ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now be made free from sin and become servants to God. Ye have your fruit unto holiness 
and the end everlasting life. Can we? And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Can we read verse 6 and 7? See, came by water and blood. Even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. That was already verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Verse 9, I read, If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he has testified of the Son. He that believeth on the Son of God has the witness in himself. He that believeth not God has made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that has, can we all read verse 12? He that has the Son has life. And he that has not the Son of God has not life. Verse 13, I read, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desired of him. If any man see his brother sin a sin, which is not unto death, he shall ask, and he shall give him life. For them that sin not unto death, there is a sin unto death. I do not say that he shall pray for it. All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever that is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Verse 19, and we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. Verse 20, and we know that the Son of God is come, and he has given us an, an understanding that we may know him that is true, and we are him that is true, even in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God, and ever eternal life. Can we all read verse 21, shouting it loud? Little children, keep yourselves from my to Amen. Lord bless the reading of his word in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, we're about to dive deeper into very serious matters. To, to take us further in the next few minutes, I want to welcome my brother to the microphone, Reverend Anthony Anonyu. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you are clapping for Jesus, do it better, do it better, do it better. La bronde bokoshi tala barala tala brinda gadea. In Jesus' name. Let's celebrate our Papa. It's not easy for this family. Okay? Is that how you're celebrating him? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I want us to pray one prayer before we do it. I want to celebrate all the strong men in the house, all the Aaron and Oz. I just came to the house and I saw strong men. I, I, I wish like coveting them and dragging them to Port Harcourt, but it just, it's something I cannot do. <laughs> I said, God, can I get the oil to get this kind of strong man? It's, you know, when I fed these strong men last, it was around 90s, when I saw some group of men, they just look like nobody, but they are strong. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together for all the strong men in the house. Put your hands together for them. Hallelujah. Every day, strong men are becoming fewer and fewer. Only people that are showing up 
and trying to display what they don't have. That's the people we are seeing in the plane today. But the Lord give us stronger men in Jesus' name. Can you rise on your feet? I want us to pray one prayer. It was the book of Matthew chapter 20. You know, Jesus was saying something there. He said, Matthew 20 from verse 1. Just one prayer. He said, the kingdom of God is likened unto a man that, uh, that's a householder, which went out early in the morning to hire a laborer into his vineyard. Number two. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny and a day, and he sent them into the vineyard, and he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, Go also into the vineyard also. Whatever is right, I will give you. And they went their way into the vineyard. Again, he went out again in the sixth hour. Somebody say sixth hour. That's, that's around three. 3, 3 p.m. And then he did likewise. Next verse. Sorry, 6 is 12. Then, and um, about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing idle and said to them, Why standing here all the day idle? And he said unto them, Because no man hired us. And he said to them, Go ye also into the vineyard. Amen. And whatsoever is right, I will give thee. Next verse. So when when even was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the seaward, Call the laborers and give them their wages or hire, beginning from the last to the first. Guess what he did? When they came there, when they came, they were hired about eleven I did that were hired about eleven hours. They received every man what? A penny. And when the first came and supposed that they should be received more, they likewise received one penny. My prayer point is, God, I know you have called all the big men of God. You have given them, uh, you have given them assignment. Are you getting what I'm saying? I'm like somebody by the roadside, the market side, looking for an assignment. Lord, give me an assignment in this season. Oh, I, I may not be called like them. The first set was called. They say, I'm entering covenant with you. I will pay you one penny after service. God may have given them vision, given them anointing, given them covenant, but I may not have covenant like them. But give me assignment. Hold your neighbor's hand. I say, give me something to labor for you until that kingdom come and your will be turned upon the earth. Oh Lord, give me an assignment, oh Lord. I am waiting idle in the marketplace. It's a level tower and souls are perishing. My God, put your hands on me. Give me an assignment, oh God. There is something I can do in this end time. There is something I can do. Don't just keep me looking at me, becoming idle and wasting my time, wasting my years. Somebody is here. You thought your years is over. You are wasted time. God can still conscript you and put you in the field and pay you what he paid other people. They may have angelic encounter. God may have shown them nations. God may have shown them many things. I know he didn't show me anything. Oh God, but send me. Send me to the field. Give me something to do for you. Ah, insist on me. I may not have a calling like them. I may not have 11 hours vision. I may not be called by an angel. But look at me. I'm wasting time. Oh God, send me. Send me, oh God. Send me. Give me an assignment. In Jesus' name we are prayer. Did you know there is nowhere in, in, in the history that Papa Kumi said God called him and gave him vision to do deeper life. 
he, was, he just felt in his spirit that he should just start Bible study. Started Bible study. From Bible study, he went to church. From church, he went to crusade. From crusade, everywhere I knew him. There was no single time his angel appeared and said, Don't say the Lord. Papa Kumi, I have called you. There's nothing like that. But he entered into the life of God and began to find the expression. And something began to happen to him. He didn't know, but he kept going one step to another. From one step to another. He became a voice in the land. Oh God, I may not be called like them, but do something on me. Baba mi olowo gbogboro oba nla to gbomo re ninu ofin eleti yi gbaro ye aru iro ala olorun mi ka bi yo si eru jeje to mi gbo kijikiji o igbo ni wundi ya forun ala so fun fun oni wa fun fun oni nu fun fun ala de ogo baba yanu and don't fara ti be okay and it don't be me giga and it don't to be you law or law or tico she ba fi ga ba ga moju baro dore u baba oba koda oba sheda kilo she o e wa gbe ogo Carry your go, Hala de Ogo, Mawole, Hala de Ure, Asaro Mate Sheo, Dansa Kira Baba, Oh, La Brina Mandela Gaga Baba Baba, Ewa de Ogo, Carry your go. Hala de ogo mawole Onye suru namba no ya namba Oke mu agaga logu Oke miri na bogwe ma dike ndike rerem Kina tun pa tun poro Ugu ona re atu egu Aka na ku babara ku baruse Cheze chi anwawo Onye ku biri na no ya Abakuru abade bem Abakuru ezurike Ibo manage ndumo Ogaka trana la gawa ne lumini Jana rona ku ya ne pume Omu me me refero Aka mere na buka dineza tahiya Ozo waro la di wanyi simbe Ojo barabu wana fo Oji wa emoji Awa ku ogi ziabari aya Opa mbaka na baragi bago Onye hogi matono po Ebu bedike bwa hagi Ozo waro la 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 You are the living God Is it no one like you? You pick me from the muddy clay, set my feet up on the rock to stay. You are my promoter, you are my defender. You are the living God, oh, Daddy. Is it no one like you? Okay, no kuchi. Oke chie nukuchi Nani gibu wa mwaka chime Obu nyi kurubu higeme Omoka chie nukuchi Ama mama siyama so lori ye lori ye lori ni Aku batano ya mbada ba wasa Ekuwebe so gibu ekuwebe Iyi karabu igeme Iyi karabu igeme Obo nye ge kumachi me kusasea Obo nye ga turuchi mukale Iwa gimbawe Chukwe biye biye Iwa go iri ya mama masi ya masi Ebubedike Okechi Ekuweme 
You are the living God. No one like you. You are my healer, you are my keeper, my restorer, my life giver. You are the living God. La grisana chichini mula trumbi liga na no sopele. E grisana chichini mula diando goske bila manana no sele. E krasi si na china gloso bila na mo si na 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 na. Krasi si na nanta lubri na na no sele. E grisana jano brianda galula. Rosi anda gabara lagadia. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh. You are the king that never fails. To you be all the glory. You that seated in the heavenlies and the earth is your footstool. You that write it upon the wings of the wind. You that break it natural protocol to fulfill supernatural agendas. You are the ambassador of the mighty. You are the backbone of the brave. You are the captain of the conqueror. You are the defense of the defenseless. You are the emperor of the elect. You are the forerunner of the fight of faith. You are the governor of the great. You are the head of the heroes. You are the image of invisible God. You are the king of the kingdom. You are the leader of the legislatures. You are the judge of the jury. You are the master of the mighty. You have a name above every other name. You are the qualifier of the qualified and unqualified. That's why you brought out money from the mouth of a fish. Oh my God. To break the law of banking and finance. You break the law of demand and supply. You use five loaves of bread and two fishes. To feed 5,000 men without counting children. You broke engineering law called the law of flotation. The iron has to flow on the water. And then Jesus walked on the sea and command Peter to walk with him. What a life you have. Oh, bring a school zone, Eugenia. Look and be baby katai. Which man it may look impossible, but you all things are possible. Look at Sanato. Brianda de Boho Shata. Let your name be highly exalted, Jesus. It's time to do your work again. I disappear that you will appear. I decrease that you will increase. Have your way, Jesus and open the world to us. Oh God, it was taken to the unlearned. They said, we cannot read because we are unlearned. It was taken to the learned. They said, we cannot assess the revelation of this scripture because they are sealed. You are the God that opened the sealed things. Open your word this moment and let your revelation come. In Jesus' name we are praying. Thank you, Jesus. Please be seated briefly. Put your hands together for our Papa again. For this. Amen. Amen. We're talking about deeper life, lecture on deeper life. Amen. There are a few, few things I'm going to do briefly because before my time will be up, I have short time. Then I'm going to talk about things you need to understand about deeper life, about life. I, I wrote a book. The title of the book is uh, Supernatural Life. And the second book is... Um, Operational deliverance. Amen. In that my book, some of the things I'm going to say right now is there. And then you can get a copy if you can. But I want to deal with deeper life proper. Someone say deeper life. Deeper life. But before I start with deeper life, then I have to start with the life. Because there must be a life before you see a life that is deeper, right? See, if there is no life, there is no deeper life, right? So let's go to the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. Can we look at that scripture? Um, John chapter 3 verse 16. Then we'll look at what you need to know about the life. Then we'll not talk about the deeper life in a few minutes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him. Someone say believeth in him. 
should not perish, but have what? Everlasting life. That word everlasting life, if we look at it from the Greek word, is called zoe. Someone says zoe. And zoe means God kind of life. And that God kind of life is what we term as internal life. We call it as God kind of life. It's a life that goes deeper. And then for you to understand this life, then you have to look at there are four words that represent life in the Bible. Those four words, uh, one of them is called Zoe. Someone says Zoe. Zoe. The second one is called Soche. Someone says Soche. Soche. That simply is the natural life. Someone says natural life. Animal life, your natural life like this without anything, just zombie. You just eat, feed, blood. It's powered by the blood. It's powered by the human blood. It can be sustained by food. Are you getting what I'm saying? That was carries your flesh. Someone say your flesh. Another part of it is called the bios. Someone say the bios. That is the manner of life, of the behavior of life. And the next one is called anatrophy. Someone say anatrophy. It's called a deviation of life, the deviation or confusion of life. Are you getting what I'm saying? So in these four kinds of life, you notice that the one people that our church actually focus on the, the, the bios. And we never deal the manner of life. And we never deal with the internal life, the God kind of life. That's why, as what is the bios? For example, now, you know, as we are praying, it's normal for us to bend and I get to what I'm saying now. So you notice that even people that don't have the life can copy it and bend down and have a kind of way. They are joining us to do it, but there's no life in them. Did you get what I saw? So they can do that for 35 years and aspire, but they think other people will be graduating from one level to another, deeper into the things of God. They are going to remain on the plain level because they copied the manner. It happened in my former church. Many people tied their hair, dressed properly, but in their heart, they never encountered that life. So all of us are, are, are moving from one level to another in the things of God. We move from not speaking in tongues to speaking in tongues. They were still there. We move from not speaking, from, uh, speaking in tongues to entering into the gift of the Spirit. They were still there. We also move into the higher things of God. They were still there. What happened? They, they had the mannerism, the, the doctrine, the lifestyle, but it did enter into the life that powered it. Bef our papa, before he came up with that, there are many encounters he has received, many long prayers. He entered into the womb of the spirit and he came down with a manner of bending down and holding his tummy and crying to God. Anytime he takes that posture, heaven shakes and powers are released. But then we also do the same thing and nothing is released because they didn't transcend into where he transcended. They can mock him and say, don't mind those things they are doing, wasting their time until his result will mesmerize them. They don't have what it takes to power what they are saying. Boy, it has result. Are you getting what I'm saying? Put your hand on your head and say, Lord, don't let me follow the manner and lose the life. Kappa, shoot it. Pray that prayer a few minutes. Don't let me follow, follow what we are doing as a house. And I refuse to enter into the womb of life to draw my own down. Zatatos. Breaking Akushkai. Latoni Briaskuminaya. La Satatabo. Le Krundabo Sataya. Ratatatabo. In Jesus' name we are praying. Because of my time, let's look at this life. Someone say, how do we contact this life? Someone say, contact the life. You remember that the Bible says, in that place we read yesterday, I think 1 John chapter 5 verse 11. Can we open that place? 1 John chapter 5. I'm going to do a little bit of scripture, so media. And this is the record that God has given to us. What? Internal life. And this life is where? Next verse. He that had the son have what? Life. And he that had not the son had not what? Okay, just move from that to first John chapter 5, verse 26. John chapter 5, not first John now. John chapter 5, verse 26. Look at that scripture. John chapter 5, verse 26. Look at it quickly. He said, For as the father had life in himself, can you see that? So has he given to the son to have life where in himself. Did you get what I said? 
But hear this now. Go back to that same John chapter 1 verse 4. Go to that same John chapter 1 verse 4. Someone says, Zoe life. I have Zoe. Say it again. I have Zoe. I say, I have Zoe. I have the life of God in me. Look at, look at this. He said, in him was what? Life. And the life was in the light of what? Hold on. We see light there as a development. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anywhere there is light, there is what? Development. Remove the light and put development. In him was life. And the life was in the development of what? Man. So for you to enter, you must have him to enter into the development, into the deeper life we are talking about. Are you getting what I'm saying? Guess what? Remember what we read before? He said, anyone that believes in him, right? Any man that what, believe in him will, have, will not perish but have what? Everlasting life. So there are two things you will notice there that gives us an advantage how we contact this thing. He said, anyone that have this life as Jesus, we have, anyway, have Jesus have life. So Jesus was telling us how to assess this thing. Someone say, how to assess these things. So how do we assess this life? Someone say, how do we assess this life? Oh, give me John chapter 17 verse 3. How do we assess this life? NIV precisely. John chapter 17 verse 3. He said, this is eternal life. That they may know you. The only true God. And who? Whom you what? You have sent. That word know is the same word in the book of Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. It's the same word in the book of Genesis chapter 4. They that do know their God shall be what? Strong. The same word also in the book of Genesis that the Bible says Adam knew what? His wife. Which means, when you come to the point whereby you now know God, internal life began to find expression in you. That word no, it doesn't mean reading books and having a mental knowledge. It simply means having an intercourse. Adam had intercourse with the wife and actually gave birth to a son. Anytime you begin to have deep relationship with God and God saw that you are sincere in this move that you are moving, he began to bring something like his glory to mount you. What is life? Life is immortality overshadowing mortality. Anytime mortality begin to give birth mortality begin to give birth to mortality, life is born. Remember how Jesus was born. The Bible says that hey, the, the angel Gabriel said, he said the power of the highest shall do what? Overshadow you. And the spirit of the Lord will do what? Come upon you. And that seed of life will be what? Will be born. Anytime you come into this atmosphere, something is better than you. You may not know it. Even the wife that slept with the husband didn't know a child has entered. But as this small life called spermatozoa begin to traffic in the journey under the fluid and travel faster, over 200 million of them, and be the and enter and got the side God and then the mother is still playing around and still doing things but that what is called cell division meiosis and mitosis is taking place the woman didn't know that is cell division taking place he didn't know life is being born after some time when they have now formed the zygote and in now moving from that place you if I look at tube and then descended inside the womb and form a root in the floor of the womb suddenly the woman start vomiting the sign starts showing initially when the life comes you will not see any sign just come around this atmosphere you will see a life enter you just go out there you know that life is in you somebody say life is in me life is in me let me tell you something there are four thank you so that i can know my time 10 minutes more thank you there are four ways we have encounter. Someone say encounter with the supernatural life. Four ways. The first way we have encounter with the supernatural life is called appearing in the place of traffic. What did I say? Remember, 
Jacob was on his way going somewhere to Laban's house. He just got to the place where his grandfather has raised altar before. Though the stones were scattered, but there is a traffic there. He just picked one of the stones and put and laid his head. He began to encounter God. Suddenly someone appeared and said, I am the Lord God of your father Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And from today instructions was given to him and he entered into the encounter of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? The first way law of encountering the supernatural life is come. Let me tell you what happened, why I came. We just finished a program. After the program, in the night, I know the power of God moves. I saw salvation. I saw healing. I saw a lot of things happen in the program. But suddenly in the night, I woke up to pray. I saw an energy suppressed me. I did like this. No. My prayer time, I couldn't flow. I said, what is going on? I was praying. I said, okay, let me on. Apostle, do chants. And all this, all the, I played it. The more I played, the more the weakness was so much. I said, what is this? Okay. The more I tried, the more I was lying down to sleep. I slept and woke up by four. I prayed something like prayer. And then the next morning, as maybe because of the stress of the program, I was tired. The next night again, I woke up in my prayer altar to pray. The same thing came again. I said, Naka, obako haka, obako haka, obako haka, obako haka. I have to carry my I say, honey, I'm going away from this house today. I'm going to Newe. He said, just like that. I said, just like I woke up that Tuesday morning and started running down. Let me go to the place where there is traffic. Let me know what was happening to me so that I can be strong and fight better. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason reason why you die nobody is because you don't know your God's zone. You don't know places where you go and connect back whatever you have lost. I may have lost virtues. I may have lost things. But now when I come to my God's zone. I can wake up in the night and be firing like double barrel with double mouth. Why? Because I entered my God's zone. The next thing if you want to encounter life is called the principles. What did I say? If you want to encounter life, you must encounter what? The principles. Hear this. Yeah, um, uh, Cornelius was not born. He was not, he was not a Jew, right? But the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 10, from verse 2, the Bible says that the angel of the Lord came and visited someone that doesn't know God and said, your prayer, your giving has come what? To heaven. What did he do? He obeyed the principle of prayer. He obeyed the principle of giving. You thought your prayer is in vain. There's a bank where they store your prayer in advance. When you get to the point, those open naturally. Not because of you, because the prayer you are banked before. As you are groaning, you are obeying the principle in the spirit. If there is someone to pray, that's a God to answer. May you encounter God, not to give up in Jesus' name. The third principle of encountering the supernatural life is called covenant. What does it Somebody say covenant. As soon as this man accepted to enter covenant with God, God came to him and began to tell him about things that matters about his generation to come. Why? Because a man that doesn't know God decided to enter covenant with God. That's why we have God of Abraham, Isaac, and what Jacob, because a man entered covenant. Even up to today, Muslims are claiming him as father. Christian Jews are claiming him the same man as what? As a father. Why? Because he entered what? Covenant with God. Someone say, Lord, help me. The reason why apostle will do great programs everywhere all, and still come back and still put his head on bed pang is because there's a covenant. Someone say, covenant. And the covenant shall not be broken. Are you getting what I'm saying? The reason why you are feeling every day, you don't have a covenant to hold on to. Whether you are strong or weak, you are still pushing. <sighs> In the name of Jesus, you keep pushing. No matter if I leave, I will encounter like death. Let me stay. Let me stay. I know my Redeemer leave it. I may not have food to eat, but I'm in the place of covenant. One day, my Redeemer will show up for me in my place of covenant. I know my Redeemer lives. I know he will come for me. Guess what? The fourth thing you notice any time that you want to encounter this life. Somebody say, call it. Somebody say, say purpose one more time say purpose when there is a purpose on your head or an assignment encounters come are you getting what i'm saying because there is a purpose some angel has to come down and encounter zachariah and encounter mary mary that was highly favored among women why 
that was an assignment. That was a purpose. God encounters men with the supernatural because of the purpose. One of the cross and the things that God wants to do in a generation. Praise the Lord. A few minutes more. What are the enemy of the supernatural life? Somebody say the flesh. The flesh. Please give me sound a little. Give me sound a little. Somebody say the flesh. The greatest enemy of what? The supernatural life is what? Anwa. Is that the column here? Anwa. Say, 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 touch your body. Anwa. The spirit is willing. What happened? You want to fast. He said, no, don't fast. Give it more day. Suddenly you saw yourself woke up by one in the midnight to pray. And then the second day happened. Third day happened. Fourth day happened. But you just said, eh. no, since you know how to pray from 12 to 2, maybe God now wake you up again around 3 a.m. and say, give me another one hour. He said, no, I'm tired. I'll pray two hours now. Now, it's what they do every time now. After I go pray around, I'll go for a bed pang and pray. He said, you come again by 3. I said, give me another one hour. He said, no, no, no. I, 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 I'm tired now. I'm tired now. You don't know that you are missing time. The flesh is telling you not to do, not to do. But the Holy Spirit is telling you there's something you need to pull in the realm of the Spirit. But because the flesh is weak, you begin to journey in the path of death. Put your hand on your head and say, my father, any strength of the flesh, whatever that empowers flesh in my life, somebody said, die. One more time, say die. die. The Lord said, take three days dry. You say, no. Let me manage what we are doing here. Are you getting what I'm saying? I remember a time God was giving me instruction. God was giving me instruction to do some things. And I refused. I just felt maybe anointing covered. Other men of God in town are not doing the same thing. After all, I can, I can just get by. Since I still have the prophecy, I still have the word that can flow by. Until you get to a time when I can't find my lover again. I do like this. I can't find. I can't find. I, I will sing my normal chant on the altar. My lover is gone. Why? I felt it was when I have the skills. When I have the, the chants. Are you getting what I'm saying? When I come Man, me too. Yeah, and you joya for ya di to shake your arm. I thought it was happen. I did like something. I shook. I worshipped. Nothing happened. I said, No, my lover is gone. Where is my lover? I began to search for him. He didn't come back to me many days. I fasted one hour, what two hours, two days, three days, until after three years. I have to get to three years because if I had continued, you would have. He said. I was there. You didn't value me. Now, find your path to us where I am. God may abandon you if you abandon him. You say, if you draw closer to me, I will draw closer to you. The reason is he said, I will be faithful to them that are faithful. Hey, I will be forward. I will be forward to them that are forward. If you decide to take a forward life, play a game, play a game, play a game. God say he will also play a game for you. Praise the Lord. Uh, please, Two things to solve this problem. One of them is mortification. What did I say? Yes, if you can mortify the flesh, that's how to solve the problem of flesh. Come on, say, kill the flesh. In the season of your life, say, don't take gift. Don't wear expensive clothes. You can be given such instruction. Withdraw from certain honorary room. Just do certain things free. Empty your account. You say, how can I? I look me in the apostle. You close my 1.5 million for apostle. Do account. You now become apostle. Do papa account. You didn't know that a government is calling you. You say, leave us, Abba. Come and stay in the You say, no. You say, no. Why? You don't know the way of mortification. When you know the way of death, things will change in your life. One more thing you'll notice again. Someone say, corporate force. You don't stay away where your company is. Our strength is our company. If you lose your company, when, when a broom is alone, they will break you. But when you are in company, they can't deal with you. One of the ways we go deep is by staying around your company. Are you getting what I'm saying? Stay, deal with some of the things that hinders you from ascending to God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because of my time, let's start on our feet. So welcome our Papa to take us from... Amen. Wow. You can be seated. Romans chapter 8. Bro, find your Bible and your jota, my friend. What are you playing for me? God bless you, man of God, so much. I 
I think that one of the things that we should be taught about is the matter of of life. The reason is because there is a challenge trying to educate somebody about something that he is not naturally given to. self me, naturally given to. The matters we are discussing is of, first of all, of higher importance, but there is a challenge in it. You are not naturally given to it. And that is why it is very, very hard. In fact, it takes life to teach about life. <laughs> Many times, I was meditating on the matter again to yesterday. It takes life to teach about life. I mean, you can give a robust lecture about life. If life is not in it, you have not taught about life. That is how critical the matter is. It is actually from the abundance of life accumulated that a man can teach what blessed people, what did the work of God is the measure of life that went into that teaching not the body of doctrine. One of the reasons why you need to understand this is because the, the physical and natural realm is filled up with many activities. And listen to me, those activities is not necessarily wrong. But God measures his, his impact. He measures impact by the amount of life that is in it. So you can come today and stretch your hands like this and something happen. Naturally, a human being will come tomorrow and do what? You are not with me. If I stretch my hand and three cripples walk, because that's the one you can relate with. If I stretch my hands and three cripples walked and I see three cripples tomorrow, what will I do? Now, let's assume another three worked. If I come next tomorrow, what will I do? Let's assume any time I stretch my hands and three cripples walk, what will people that is learning from me start doing? Now, they don't care to know whether it is the stretching of hands that gets that done or is there something behind the scene. And this is it. In spiritual things, it's not about stretching hands. It doesn't matter what you do. What God is in is that which is blessed by life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you remove life, the life of God, first of all, God is not in it. And if God is not in it, he cannot walk. He's not the one walking. Now, the challenge is that even in the instances that human being, per chance, stumbled on something that is a product of divine life, of grace, of supernatural origin, they dump it. They dump how God appeared to them and begin to find a means of building a monument there. If you help me so far, say amen. amen. I asked the question before, is there a way I can pray once and not pray again? Have you not considered that kind of thing before? Is there a way I can? Huh? Is there a way I can fast once and not fast again? How many of you, you are in my shoes? Let me tell you. You have to consider the fundamentals of a matter. One of it is this. God created you in such a way that you will be dependent on him. Are you seeing it now? So, if you lived today by the energy of God, how will you live tomorrow? You are correct. The day you dissociate yourself from what God set in place as the engineer of that energy, it is only a matter of time, the departure will be felt. Many times it might not be immediate, but it won't take time and the departure will be felt. Where is Akudo? Strike for me in five minutes. The departure will be felt. 
Have you not noticed, for example, that in the context of flowing in the things of the spirit, a man can stumble on spiritual things maybe by fasting for seven days. Then things will happen, happen so much. Tomorrow he didn't fast. Even more things happen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, Ask every man of God that has ministered the little, it has happened to him. In fact, you didn't pray, you didn't prepare, you pray. You now came and taught us and said, it's by grace. You don't need to struggle in this thing. That there is a place you enter and you stop praying and fasting. Listen to me. There is nothing like that. Hmm? It will only mean that what you laid hold on is, is strong enough to carry you for this sufficient. Huh? Now, your departure will not be obvious. Your dissociation and declaration of independence from the source of life has not yet been made obvious. Your folly has not been revealed yet until the day that the things you accumulated will begin to diminish. Now, this is the challenge. If you notice a diminution and you step in to correct the diminution, it will take time. Let's assume that there is still a protocol of recovery that is still possible. Huh? It will take time for we to feel the impact of that recovery process. But unfortunately, human beings, want, if they initiate, have you not noticed it? If they initiate the protocol of recovery, they want to see results immediately. When a young man comes and touches pornography, touch a woman the first time. I don't want to ask you people, have you touched a woman? Touch a woman and then sleep with the woman. Come out and notice, ah, I did not die. You. <laughs> Say after me, I did not die. You, not die. you died. The challenge is that just like Adam noticed in the garden that God told him the day you will touch this fruit you will die. But he touched it. He noticed that he didn't fall on the ground. He didn't die. But he died. It took time. For him it took 900 years for his death to be manifested in the natural, in the physical. Are you getting the point? It is even more dangerous because the death that Adam died by that action did not affect him as an individual person as he's affecting you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Adam died 900 years. You are, people are dying 70 years now. Now, we did not know the impact of that death until we entered 2024. And we found out that that death, has, having worked for thousands of years, has now matured in his working. To the point that we have more sicknesses than we know now. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Doctors. Chukunya, have you gone? Oh, my man. <laughs> as hard as doctors are working, we still have more sicknesses that are not discovered. Am I, am I correct? Yes, sir. I celebrate all the doctors, but we have sicknesses that are not discovered. And more will be coming. It, was, it is not always like that. There are sicknesses that wouldn't have even come into existence if it is not for the depravity that man suffered. Are you getting what I'm saying? There are sicknesses that are traceable to the perversion and decadence of morality directly. Is it not true? That means that both the originality of sin and the progressive participation in the actions of sin has a way of bringing down the value and longevity of what? Life. Now, you might not notice immediately the impact of that in your life until after some time. Maybe you engage pornography after some time. After some time. Touch pornography for like two to three years, four years. As it started, you didn't notice anything. Now, that's, this is the challenge. You now got born again. Ba, 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 ba. Two years, three years, you are on fire for God. You now say doing three days fasting. You now do three days fasting and notice that you are in the when you are you are dreaming and a girl will appear and smile and you smile back. You wake up and you are angry with yourself. Who is that guy that smiled back? Is the guy you are not with me? Is the guy you built after the image of your lost for four years? 
You built a being after the image of your loss. You fed it with the raw materials that it needs to be built. In such, it is such a matter that even some people that are no more given to immoral life or pornography are still finding themselves suffering from masturbation and all those things. Do you ask them? You say, I've not done anything for the last six months, for the, but I still find myself there. The problem is this. You have already built a man after your image. So that even when you died, that thing that Adam did, did not what? Die. The scripture even emphasized it clearly. Had it been Adam was able to have an offspring, offspring before he sinned. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the son that he will beget, beget, beget is not necessarily after the image of his fallen nature. But by the time he sinned, the scripture said, Adam beget a man after his likeness. Not after God's likeness. So he begat a man after what? His likeness. That is what you do when you travel, you journey on the path of sin. You create a being. Now, the day you now decide to leave another path, that being will keep following you. And say, brother, you are leaving me. Brother, come back. Brother, come back. You now do three days dry fasting. They will still hold you down. Four days. They, you come and tell me, apostle, there is no prayer. I have no prayer. There is no fasting. After you have created a man after your likeness. You have already created a being. Are you following me now? Yes, if you are with me so far, say amen. amen. <laughs> That's why God is telling you, don't, when God tells you, don't sin, don't do this. They actually think they are doing God favor. Doing who favor? He is trying to save you. He is trying to save you from the consequences. If the consequence is immediate, you have not even felt the impact of the spiritual thing. God has the advantage of years, the aeons. The information he has gathered from seven generations of people that have come from your natural lineage. And when you decided to follow God, he told you, do like this. He's trying to conquer. He's trying to blot out a path. A path that Satan has the ability to take advantage of in the days that you begin to mature. When you look at it, you say, What was the? Is it bad? Is it not just to have a girlfriend? I just need to just have a guy so that somebody I'll be talking to. Before you know it, you, you got pregnant. A young man sent me a message, very sad. Very, very sad. So sad. Very young man. He's not even up to 20 years. He said he's on fire for God. I was on fire, I was on fire, I was on fire. Then, another sister on fire. Both of them are what? Fire. True, true. For God, it's true. It's true. Don't mock the fact. It's true. But suddenly, they smiled at each other. That's the first departure. That's when, <laughs> that's when you should fight that thing. Death entered at that part. When, that point, when you notice something shifted like this. But you liked it. So you accommodated it. I said, it's not something much. Satan laughed. Satan said, first victory. Do you think that if Adam knew the accumulated consequence of what he did by that thing he ate, that he will try it again? He did not calculate where. They told him he will die. He checked it and said it's, it's a price worth paying. Thousands of years later, we have not finished dealing with the matter. You don't know you are about to replay the game that Adam played. At any time, a man yielded to any protocol of death. He's reinitiating the same thing that Adam did. The consequence of what you started doing as a departure from the template of God might be felt in three generations of your natural uh, lineage. I told you people, and you people know. I hope you know. 
that there is a way you will lie, 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 lie. <laughs> a, God. a brother, a brother said that he lied so much that he didn't know when he was possessed with the spirit of lying. That he was driving in traffic, driving, driving, suddenly. Traffic people. He was driving in one way. Traffic people caught him and said, why are you driving in one way? He said his mother died now and they caught him and he's rushing. <laughs> his mother is alive. Just, he said he didn't even know when he lied. That he has finished lying before he realized that he used his... And he loves his mother. He won't give up. He didn't know that is how much he said he didn't that when he finished it was when he finished lying that he realized what he actually said that means the spirit has overtaken him it has given him inspiration as soon as he said my mother died they cleared for him it was when he now went he now realized he came and met me and said Kai, say he can lie At this level now, if that person doesn't deal with that, he will hand it over to his child without teaching the person. I taught them in morning sessions of the 50 days that when the reason, part of the reason why God is trying to take you out of the life of sin and the life that doesn't represent God in character is because if a man lives all his life sinning. Let's say he's lying. By the time that man is dying, he has left an altar of, of iniquity. According to the scripture, there are many words that is used for sin. If you give your life to fornication, check it. People that their great-grandfather married 14 women, 30 women, go and check them. Many of them in three generations are still struggling with woman issues. Go and check it. Even the people that are now married one wife, they have a few concubines outside now. Is it not true? Yes, sir. Why? When you give yourself so much to the... It's no more a weakness now. You have built an altar to that weakness. Now, what you are saying is that I'm handing over to my generations the altar of this weakness. Once a, an act or a lifestyle of sin passes from one generation to another, it has become what? An iniquity. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. So you began to lie by an education that you did not even know when you started. Probably your generations have been lying to escape. And when it came to your own time, you intensified the measure. The same thing with women. It can be the same thing with food. Your father can come out and say, on this matter of food, nobody should play with me. Le take everything what? Leave food. Take everything what? Leave food. Take everything. I know a brother, once he eats, he'll be so happy. He'll be so happy. And I'm, he's not... He'll be so happy. You can rarely hurt him in this life after he has eaten well. You can rarely. Not, I'm not sure. There are a few things that can breach. Once he has eaten well, he's so happy. Anything you do to him, he doesn't feel it. But if he has not eaten, he is sensitive, oversensitive. If you tell him he has big head, he will, he will not like it. But if he eats well, if you tell him you have big hair, he say, yes, I know. <laughs> if you check well, somebody in his generation did not finish his food adventure <laughs> and handed over the mantle to you. Which mantle are you carrying? Huh? Check it now. Have you not heard it? Some of your parents have told you, ladies, that in our family, if you go to your husband's house, don't grieve for him. They hand it over to you. You take it. 
Once he, ah, uh, there are many needs. Come on. That's how you are replicating it. Even if your children did not know what you did, they will find themselves doing it because it has become an iniquity. So after me, Lord, Lord. Help, me to obey you now. help me to obey you now. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Let's read verse 2 together. We can do better. The person that did the opening prayer did a powerful job. And she quoted a lot of this scripture. Let's read it again. One, two, ready, go. Can we read it again? One, two, ready, go. There are two laws at work. Two laws. How many laws? laws. The first law is the law of what? The spirit of life. The second law is what? The law of sin and death. Now, you can call a law a principle. How many of you are scientists? What do you study? Uh Who is a scientist? What do you study? Computer science. You know what? A law can be substituted as a principle. At what point does a principle become a law and be a law become a principle? Huh? Huh? When I'm done, they deny me now. Huh? They are the same thing. And they can be entire use. Good. So, the, uh, the reason why I'm choosing principle here for your own sake is because when I use the word law, you will see it as a commandment. No, this law here is not about commandment. Hello? You are not with me and I'm not happy. It's not in your mouth. (laughs) I want you to substitute in this Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Anywhere you see law, substitute it for principle. That word law, substitute it for what? Principle. Because if you see law, You are thinking that the law that they are talking about here is the law of Moses. It is not the law of Moses at all. This is a law that is at work before Moses came on the scene. Are you with me? This law went to work as soon as man sinned the first time. It began to work. Are you with me? The law of Moses is the law of carnal commandments. That's what it is called. But this law here... It's not a law of a commandment. It is a law of a principle. So, wherever you see law here, substitute it for principle. Are you getting it? Can we try to read it again? Huh? Pay attention. Where are you reading it from? Verse 2. One, two, ready, go. No. Where you see law, put principle. One, two, ready, go. Is it not easier to grab now? There is always the principle behind the work of anything. This is not a commandment. When we say the law of sin and death, it's not somebody will say eh, that, um, that uh, uh, when Jesus... That's not what we are talking about. Once you hear the word principle, the reason why we substituted law, principle for law is when you see principle, you will know that we are talking about the organic and working aspect of what we are discussing. Are you getting the point? So that's why a lawyer cannot necessarily use principle. But a scientist can use principle for the same thing that a lawyer used the word law. Why? Whilst the lawyer is dealing with the legal aspect, the scientist is dealing with the actual aspect of the matter. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So when something happens, a scientist will tell you that the principle behind... Let me give you a little example. Let's say it's a combustion engine. Where is Collins Okoli? 
What is the principle behind the combustion engine? Like the four-stroke engine now. It has the plug. Uh -huh. And where the fuel passes. Don't be confused by what is called four-stroke engine. It's like V4, V6. Is it not true? Uh -huh. So that's it. You are driving V8. Listen to how your car works. So the simple thing that happens is that the fuel passes. The fuel comes to the engine. Then the plug is what sparks it. That's why it's rotating. As it's rotating, then the oil functions to make the lubrication free. That's what happens. So what is the principle behind the combustion engine? Sir, is... Huh? What do you say? That's what I'm saying. Bro, you are very intelligent. Hey, quiz school you go. He's your brother now. So I'm still correct. I know there are photo guys here. Thank God is a photo man that delivered another photo man because they would have said that photo has problem, but is another photo man that appeared. <laughs> if you are with me so far, say amen. amen. Photo, so say after me, the principle of oxidation. When you see that big V8 engine, I used to watch some of them. If you see what is happening, the, the engine is looking complex. It is based on a principle. You are not with me. When you see something happening in the life of a man, including the issues that you have been trying to conquer and defeat all your life, it is riding upon the principle of sin and death. So every defeat that man has suffered since the fall is built upon the cumulative and complex equations that came from the foundation of the principle of sin and what? Death. They kept combining equations. Kept combining it. It is became, becoming larger. But when you, when you disintegrate, you will find out that the basic solution there is the principle of sin and what? Death. That is what powers all the weaknesses that a man feels as a natural man. All the challenges that we, um, that we are faced with outside of the support of God. It is the principle. Are you seeing it? So, when we say the law, it is not the law in the sense of a commandment. Touch that red sister. Blonde hair. Fish. People from U.S., they will call you blondie. When the principle of death begins to work in a man, you will not know. Are you seeing where I'm going now? So, this is what Satan does. <laughs> he doesn't need to kill you to die now. All he needs to do is to introduce a principle. What's the name of that principle? The principle of sin and death. And it is only a matter of time. The principle of sin and death will yield all the purposes of Satan. Now, if it is true for Satan, if God wants to walk, what will he do? He will also introduce another principle. The principle of what? Spirit of life. It doesn't matter how small it is. If you find that life, it has the ability to consume everything into God. Pataya kapush. When you got born again, it looks as if nothing really happened. I don't know about you. So when you got born again, your own might be very big. And Jesus appeared to you and is waving to you, waving to you, waving to you, and then disappeared. God win. That's how your own happened. What happened? How many of you had dramatic encounter when you got born again? You were crying and weeping, and Jesus was so loving and telling you, love. You told me that the Holy Spirit came and stayed for how long? For a while. A while is how many days or how many weeks? A day. And he was there, and you were feeling the presence and all that. Is it not true? Ah. My own was so indifferent that I almost forgot I was born again. How many of you were like me? I almost forgot. I almost forgot I was born again. I needed to be taught the scriptures 
to explain to me that I now have a new life. Nothing happened. The first dramatic thing that ever happened to me was when I spoke in tongues. Thank God that speaking in tongues has, the baptism of the Holy Spirit has evidence. Evidence of speaking in tongues. Even somebody like me can, can stay there without any evidence. If you're with me so far, say amen. amen. You can be born again and the seed of God's life will be implanted in you. That's enough. Listen to me. I want to see if I can use one stone to kill two birds. The reason is that we have a bigger challenge as men that is approximating into the purpose of God having experienced the fall in Adam. It is already a labor for you to get into all of God without ever having been, been in sin. Let's assume you never sinned. It is still a walk. Did you read the scripture? In the book of Genesis chapter 2, I think verse 2, the scripture said, And the Lord God finished all of his works. Show me now. Who is that person there? And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had what? Give, uh, and blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because, it, because in it he had rested from all his work, which God what? I didn't hear you. Which God what? So specifically, the scripture is telling you that it is not all works that God rested from. He rested from creative works. Are you with me? <laughs> Elijah, are you with me? God rested from what kind of works? Creative works. He said he, he had rested from all his work, which God created and what made. That means God entered into rest in creative context. Meanwhile, that is not all the rest. Because in the matter of the purposes of God, there is no rest yet. In the matter of the house of God, there is no rest yet. Until Jesus appeared on the scene, and the scripture said, In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead. What? Bodily. Until that point, God did not have house. Because even when the children of Israel built him a temple, the scripture said, Oh, you think that I live in houses that is made with hands? You don't know me. I'm looking for a house. It took the progressive revelations of God in the New Testament for we to understand that there is an eternal construction that God has in view. And that every believer that has found himself within the conclave of the kingdom is a living stone that will be used in that construction site. That God is looking for a house to live in. Are you getting the point? That means in the context of construction of that eternal place that God will inhabit for all of eternity. God has not rested. Are you getting the point? There is even redemptive works, but in the context of redemptive works, God, I hope you know, that redemptive works started from actually Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> if you are with me so far, say amen. amen. As soon as God prophesied, or rather spoke, and said that the Seed of the woman we bruise this uh, uh, and the serpent and whatever. That is the beginning of the redemptive labels. It means that God started searching for seed. Started by the time Christ came, died, resurrected, and all that that happened. God rested from his redemptive what works. That means he has rested from his creative works, rested from his what redemptive works. But look at you now. You have not become whom God has ordained. That means in the matter of his eternal purposes, he has not rested from his work. In fact, in that one, I don't know how many aeons it will take for God to rest from that work. Can you pray for one minute and say, Lord, I yield my members as instruments where you will walk, walk as deep and as powerful as you desire. Pray for one minute.
In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want you to see the matter of eternal life in three revelatory steps. Number one is as an act of safety and salvation that is a direct deliverance and preservation from eternal damnation and judgment. Bro, what did I say? Huh? You even close your Bible and your jotter and you are sitting in front. Ah. I'm still coming back to this book of Romans chapter 8. You with me? If you're with me, say amen. amen. I said number one is as an act of safety and salvation that is a direct deliverance and preservation from eternal damnation and what? Judgment. That's the first point, Revelation. as a direct deliverance, as an act of safety and salvation that is a direct deliverance and preservation from eternal damnation and judgment. This is the revelation of eternal life that an average evangelical doctrine and learning holds. Are you getting the point? That is how many of us got to be born again. Especially when you quote the book of John chapter 3 verse 16. If you like John chapter 3, verse 16 a lot, and you have used it for evangelism a lot, it will mean that you are an evangelical many times. Because the book of John is not for evangelism. The book of John is for discipleship. Because John does, didn't really write to people that are not yet born again, actually. For God so loved the world, this for God so loved the world is not an attempt to stress the love of God in the context of the enormity and the magnitude of the love of God. Yeah, we know that the love of God is beyond measure, but that is not, that is not the labor of the word of God in this piece of scripture. For God so loved it. That's not what this place is saying. The word for here is a conjunction. You study English language. You know what conjunction means? It means it is a, that verse 16 is a stressing of a former point that is already made. And the word for is standing as a contact point between the former point and this. Are you getting the point? So let's see verse 15. That whosoever, let's see verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in wilderness, even so more the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not what? But have what? It is because of this thing we read in verse 15 that God so loved the world. Because you cannot achieve verse 15 without this happening. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave what his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Have eternal. And you have several places where the scripture said, him that believe have eternal, him that didn't believe is already damned. Hello? Have you seen things like that? He said, he's already damned. That means that eternal life is first of all an act of safety as a direct deliverance from eternal damnation. Considering the fact that man is already judged in Adam because of the fall. Are you following me? Yellow. What did I say? You are not here. Pay attention. Man has already sinned in Adam. And according to where we read yesterday, we said that the wages of sin is what? Death. That means man 
if left the way they were in Adam, he's heading for eternal damnation. He's heading for eternal judgment and there is no help coming for him. But God, through Christ, blocked. And by the release of eternal life that was possible because Jesus died, he was able to rescue man so that instead of man entering into eternal judgment, man entered into what? Eternal life. Instead of man entering into eternal judgment, he did what? Instead of entering into eternal judgment, man did what? Huh. So that's the point now. If man was heading for eternal damnation, and what stopped man from getting there was eternal life that came as a result of the sun, not just that the son appeared, he actually died to release the life. I'm still coming to that point. Because there is no release of life without the cross. In fact, I'm going to the cross. The reason why I'm going to the cross is, the cross is the biggest infrastructure in the whole universe. What did I say? How many of you have seen the Burj Al Arab? Al Burj Khalifa, Burj, what is it called? Oga? Come here. What is he called? Burj Khalifa. He's not tall. It's not big enough. What's the biggest building in this world, Seth? Huh? Call names now. Call the one you know that are big. Huh? Anyone, anywhere. Where? Huh? Cocoa House. Where is Cocoa House? Ibado. How many story building? 26. Uh, it's big. Oh. The cross is bigger than Cocoa House. Which other one? Huh? Huh? Empire State Building. Where is it? New York. How big is it? What of the Twin Towers that went down on September 11? How long was it? I put it to you that the cross is bigger and taller than all those buildings. There is no infrastructure that is even close. They took the cross, turned the cross, he went deep to hell and went tall to heaven. Only the cross can meet the Son of God and reduce him to his deity. He came raw flesh, we are eating with him. We did not this man have the capacity to save every man. Not just save them, but give them his life. He took the cross to reveal whom, who he is and to release the life that he has. To do what? And? To do what? We didn't know. Do you know John was boasting? He said, just like somebody that knows me. And some people have done it. <laughs> a brother came and they, a brother came somewhere and they asked, he said, he, said, he was listening to a message. And, and he was being blessed. And somebody that beside him asked him, who is the person talking? He told him that he's an apostle. He do that. This man is something else that is not a human being. And all those kind of things that people say. You know me. Am I not a human being? I'm your guy now. <laughs> huh? Pastor, am I not your guy? Oh, guy, you are my guy. If you refuse, I hold you. Where is Chibike? Hola, Jigo. Why am I not surprised? Where is Atoro? I'm telling you. When the shepherd has left, what will happen to the sheep? Huh? What of the stones? What are we going to do to the stones? Man of God. Is it not to just turn them to bread and eat? Take, go do tea, self, and all that, and all that. So the guy came and said, "Ah, Apostle, is it no Pastor Dina? I know him now. Ha. Ah, I know him well. In fact, I have. You see, you have his number. Let me call him now. The guy now called me. I couldn't pick. I was very busy now. Now the point is that the guy, <laughs> the guy is talking from former knowledge. Are you getting the point?" Uh -huh. 
So that's how John and them, those people were. I see Jesus. I slept on his shoulder now. If he eat, he will give me, I will eat. Now my guy. When the cross met the only son of God face to face, he reduced him to his glory. The same Jesus appeared. John fell on the ground as if he died. They have to tap him to wake up to hear voices that spoke from heaven. That means we don't know man until they collide with the cross. Sometimes you can be bogus in the flesh, bogus in the soul. But when the cross comes, it will find out that you are a miniature entity. That the substance that you retain within your inner man is so small that it can have impact on people and have impact on generations. If you have me so far, say amen. amen. We labor for life and light to come into the place where God by the cross has gathered weight in our inner man and densified himself through his life that is there. It is by that weight that we can affect things. You don't know why I teach you this. I asked the question for many years. It takes a few years to raise a man that is competent in the Torah. And for you to be a master of the doctrines of the Jews, you have to spend a lot of years. But in three and a half years, Jesus raised the apostles. Three and a half years. Say after me, three and a half years. Are you not bothered, pastor? If you are not bothered, I don't know what is bothering you. Maybe... Maybe you have another business doing. Anybody that has discipled a man, you can disciple a lady, disciple her. After three years, she will get pregnant and run away with a Yahoo boy. You will now remember that Jesus discipled Peter into an apostle, a fisherman. You will now become humble and ask Jesus, how did you do it? I asked this question for almost 15 years. I say, densify life. Something can enter you, water, and walk for three years. You cannot even explain what it is. Can lock you down in the place of training. You will stop running away. Something can keep you. It's a weight of eternal life. It's a weight. Can draw you, woo you. Your mind can be making rational reasoning. You can be doing logical analysis. But there is something heavier than your mental capacity. It is the weight of God that is resting on your heart. Sometimes you might not be able to understand everything I'm saying. But you know something is resting on your heart. He refuses to leave. Are you telling me that the times that you... Have you not woken up and you are gripped with the spirit of prayer for six hours? You didn't even realize whether you used any prayer point or not. What is happening to you? Life. There is no counseling that can bring you there. There is no moral instruction. There is no discipline that can bring a man there. By the time Jesus left and the Holy Ghost appeared, Peter said in the book of Acts chapter 6 verse 4, he said, we ourselves, we give ourselves to the ministry. They have converted the prayer. Are you with me? <laughs> they have converted their prayer life to prayer ministry. Because what they saw stumbled upon in their prayer journey in their secret place has become so rich that a generation needed to be taught the path of prayer. This is just prayer. They needed to be taught the path of prayer. So they said, we ourselves. So it means that they have generated teaching curriculum on the matter of prayer. They have generated a matter of, manner of life. They have generated a culture. They, are, they have even systematized spiritual things and they have decided upon themselves that they will teach and journey on that path. Something that they struggled with when Jesus told them, come and watch with me for one hour. What is the difference? It's after me, life. life. They needed a teaching session and the attempt is to explain what is happening to them. Why is it that we gather today and explain what has not happened to us? But in the apostolic time, they gather and they, their labor is to explain what is what happening to them. Let every man that hear me be tired of the shallow waters. Let the drink 
drunk from the wells deep and eternal. Beckon on us. The scripture said that deep call it unto the deep. And the noise of the water spouts. For thy waves and billows deep calls unto the deep. Something need to call you. <laughs> Something need to call you. I want you to pray in the next one minute and say, Lord Jesus, call me deep. The scripture said, no man can come except I call him. It's not possible for you to come deeper until you hear a voice summoning you. It is not a place that you enter by the expending of your willpower. You are not praying. You are not serious. Pray. Pray. This is when you leave your neighbor and advance. The moment is here now. Pray, 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 pray. He keeps calling me over, departing to you, departing to you, over. He keeps calling me. In the night, sometimes I'm tired. I, I don't want to pray, but he, he keeps just calling me. He wakes me up and says, hey, Do I want to stay with you one more hour? The motors, they are calling me again. They have started calling us. They are calling us. They're saying, Come deeper, come deeper, come deeper. He keeps calling me. Can you hear the summons from place yonder? For men that walk, God wants to take on a journey. He keeps calling me. Can you hear? Him? That is a death. God wants to take you to pastor. He keeps calling me over. Departing to you. Departing to you over. He keeps calling me. Big dot. He keeps calling me over. Departing to you. Big dot. Can you hear your name? Oh. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Woo me, woo me, woo me. Departing to you, oh, uh, He keeps calling me. He keeps calling me, oh, uh, Departing to you. He parting to you, oh, uh, he keeps calling. He keeps calling me, oh, uh. I see God summoning people everywhere in the universe in this season. There is a call to take men deeper. The Lord is calling the body of Christ to come deeper with him. Be fast, listen to him, young man at the council. Fifteen more seconds.
Jesus. Number two, revelation. The gift of the possibilities of God's kind of life, living, and experiences. Did you hear me? I said in the first one that the first revelation is as an act of safety and salvation that is a direct that is a direct deliverance and preservation from eternal damnation and judgment. The second layer of the revelation is the gift of the possibilities of God's kind of life. Say after me, the gift. Where we read yesterday confirmed it. Said that the wages of sin is death. But what? But what? My man at the back, the fair one. But what? Correct. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. It's after me, the gift of God. So the second level of revelation is the gift of the possibilities of God's kind of life. Living life then living. That, that is L-I-F-E comma L-I-V-I-N-G and then and experiences with its attendant benefits for us by faith especially in the now. <laughs> with its attendant benefit. When a man is gifted the God kind of life that we call Zoe there are possibilities he has here. Are you with me? If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. First of all, you need to know that it is, it, it is, it is a gift. Say after me, a gift. Say after me, a gift. I didn't hear you. Say after me, a gift. Now, this gift has the ability to bring you into the life, the living, and experiences. It is mostly unique to God. But God has decided to share it. God wants to share his kind of experiences with you. If you heard me so far, say amen. amen. And there are attendant benefits. I hope you know that there are some things that is a byproduct of the eternal life that happens in you and through you. And even angels, say after me, even angels. Even angels wonder because they are not possessors of eternal life. They have their own kind of life. But the eternal life is unique to God and God decided to share it with man only. Now, you will have to find out or rather, you have to, you have to take record of the uniqueness of man. As the man of God first said, man had human life. Are you with me? Man had human life. And that is part of the reason we also give this teaching. Man had human life. But God ordained that inclusive of human life is his own life. And what he intends to do is that this is life. We so overshadow your own life in such a way that your human life will not be totally distinct, even though there are two lives there, but you are living your human life as if it's the God life. So after me, you are living the human life, the human life. as if it's God life. life. Now, because when you, there is a mistake that a little bit, I, will, I won't call it mistake, but it is um, just a little oversight. Even though if you stretch it, it, it can lead to an error. You can hear, maybe in the teaching of new creation realities, you can, hear some, you can hear somebody teach that when you got born again, you don't have your human life, that what is changed is, no, it's not true. You have your human life, even after you are born again. <laughs> you can't find it anywhere in the scripture. Are you getting the point now? Now, that is why there is a deliberate need for participation. Because if you have your human life and have God life, the purpose of God is to overshadow the human life 
so that it can live, experience, execute as if it is God life with total influence. So God wants to influence your life by his life. What did I say? God wants, God wants to drive your life by his life. What did I say? God wants to lead you by his life. What did I say? God wants you to live your life by his life. What did I say? Now you are living your life, but you are living it by God's life. That means, if you want to reach out for potentials now, you will go beyond the potentials of your humanity and go into the potentials of the God life that you possess. And come back and leave it as a man. God never wants you to dissociate from your humanity. Never. Never. In fact, that is why in some places the eternal life is called the supernatural life. Even though I will not call it that. The reason why I will not call it that is the best thing to call it is the life of God. But that eternal life in you is a supernatural life. Are you with me? Are you sure you are with me? In God, it is eternal life. In you, it is still eternal life, but it has become the supernatural life. And the reason why it is consistent in your own context is because God has no intention of removing your humanity, but he wants to prove through your humanity his divinity. What did I say? Prove through your humanity his divinity. By what? You are correct. By his what? By his what? So, the life of God flows through your humanity and God is proving once again that his life can totally consume a man in such a way that he's totally acting, thinking, and behaving as God. But he is not God in the sense of deity, but he's in God in the sense of life shared and possibilities that he has. So, if God look around and say, okay, I want to act like this, and you are the person that is available, he can act through you exactly how he would have acted if he's acting on his behalf. But now he's acting through you, and he acted exactly the same way. Then principalities and powers look at how God acted through you, and they will learn something. Because though it looks as if he's a man acting, it is the life of God acting through what? You are now with me. That is why angels learn. They are not learning from you as a human being. They are learning from the life of God. That is where? He, yes. Sometimes as a man of God, you begin to minister like this. And then angels will be watching in the spirit. How the words that is coming out of your ma mouth is changing a human being that is totally messed up. If God spoke directly, it will be easy for them to understand. But a man is speaking, even a lady is speaking, and men are changed and they are become, and they are wondering, what is man self? What is man? Man is the personality that has been ordained to possess eternal life. And by the means of that possession, serve me, by the means of that possession, he will be influenced totally by that life. Let me say, say it, he will be influenced totally by that life. He will now live totally by that life. He possesses. He possesses. He is influenced and he lives. He possesses. He is influenced and he lives. He what? He is what? He now. I think many times when we explore the new creation realities, this is where we come. Because this can give you results on the now. You can step out of your ground and enter into God's ground and access many possibilities that is totally superhuman. You know this is not you. This is God. Are you getting what I'm saying? God can think through your mind. Huh? It is the possibility of the Zoe life walking through a man that we can look at this written Bible, written scriptures, and confirm the law of inerrance. You know what is the law of inerrance? Hmm? We cannot say that what Jesus said is the word of God and what Paul said is not the word of God. We can't say it. We can't say it. The law, if a path can be lowered, if you come in authority, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, you are not getting me. It is 
If you don't know this, your whole faith has failed. This one I'm telling you now is the foundation of our whole faith. If any portion in the Bible is debatable, then all the portions are debatable. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, that is inerrancy. It's a law. And the reason why I even went to this point is because even in the aspects that men spoke, eh, there is a total influence of the spirit. The spirit of life totally influenced. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So you cannot come and say that it's not God. Because that is God's intention. Who has even seen God? <laughs> Jesus himself appeared and said, no man has seen God at any time. No man. You don't know what it means. No man. You know the Bible said that God told the children of Israel to come to the mountain and eat with him. Huh? Anytime that there is a similitude manifestation of the Godhead, it is, it is epiphany. It is a dimension of the Son. It is only the Son that possesses a unique ability to represent the Godhead in a form. Jesus said, no man has seen God. It's only the Son that, is in, that can reveal him. It is not possible for the Father to be revealed except by the Son. Not possible. It is not possible. At any time, Jesus said a conclusive statement. Now, this is it. How then will you say that God spoke? Even when God directs angels to speak on his behalf, many times you will see the angels, they will remove themselves. They will no more speak in the second and third person pronoun. They will speak in the first person pronoun. Is it not true? Yes. Many times that is how God appeared through the angels in the Old Testament. Listen to me. Listen to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Nobody is qualified to be a man of God if God can't speak through his mouth. Everybody should go home. If it is not God speaking, everybody should what? Go home. It also means that any time we spoke and God did not speak and God did not minister, we wasted God's time, wasted people's time, wasted our time. If that is the only thing that happened, then there is no trouble. We actually yielded ourselves, according to the first minister today, our sister, to death. The day we prayed without ascending, we allowed death to step in. What he said, if he didn't shake you, he shook me. But for you, it's not that important. There is no ministry that steps out and decides to be a dead church where the fire has gone out. Many places that you are saying, eh, they are fire, if, including the denomination you came from, and some of you are coming here to contact fire. There, some of them, not all, some of them, there used to be heavy fire there. Is it not true? Yes, but the fire has gone. How did it go? The same way. One day they came, they prayed, nothing happened, and they left. They didn't try to rectify the situation. Why did God not appear to us the way he used to appear? They said, we have outgrown this level, let's manage it. We already have a system that has the ability to still run things, you know? So they now still do altar call. They do altar call without the Holy Ghost doing the altar call. And people will come out, they disciple them, take them, and... They keep doing things without the Holy Ghost. They do opening prayer without the Holy Ghost. You worship, lead worship, lead worship, and you did not ascend. You just used your pure gift. Are you with me? Yes. Nothing happened. And you did not go back to check why nothing happened. You continue like that. That is the beginning of death. That is actually the real death. The consequences of losing, when you now lost your anointing and people thought, that one is just consequence. That first act you took, that first thought in your mind is when you failed. If you are with me so far, say amen. amen. So that's the second one. The third revelation is, uh, this third one will be a little hard. I trust the Holy Spirit to help me. That's actually where I'm going. The third revelation is the bridging of the time space time space material I wrote four things or rather you can call it 
three because time space always goes together. Time space one, then material two, then three is purpose. There is a gap between humanity and divinity in the context of time space. There is also a gap between humanity and divinity in the context of mat material. Make up. Say after me, make up. Say after me, constitution. Constitution is not a rule. Sorry for the, this thing. Tomorrow we'll rectify it. Hmm? So, it, constitution is not a rule. That Constitution is a make up. You can go back and check the meaning of constitution. When you say something is constituted with something, it means the material with which that thing is made up. Are you, are you getting... Have you, have you not heard people say, what is the material that you are made up? How do they say it, sir? The stuff you are made up of. Is it not true? So after me, the stuff that you are made up of. There is a total gap between the stuff God is made up of and the stuff you as a man is made up of. Huh? The third revelation of eternal life is that it bridges that gap between the stuff God is made up of and the stuff that you are made up of. The only thing that can bridge the gap between the stuff God is made up of and the stuff that I am made up of is life. Say after me, life. Oh. Follow me. So, first thing it does is to bridge the time, time, space. So, you can stay here. A man that has the life of God can touch God here and now. Are you getting the point? That means time space has been taken away. He can be made up of what God is. He can be reconstituted. In fact, that is the level of sonship that by the progressive administration of the theory of life, we can be constituted by the material of the Son of God. Who is the eternal building material that God has ordained before all creation? God ordained that all things will be made up of Christ. Hmm? Aside is the fact that you are born again, you need to be made up of Christ. You are not yet fully made up of Christ. You are in Christ. Say after me, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. But I need, I need to be made up of Christ. Like you are inside Christ. And because you are inside Christ, you now have the license, the liberty, the authority to be made up of Christ. Huh? To them that believe, gave he what? No. To what? Because. That becoming is the process of being made up. Become sons. Sonship is the journey of being make, made up of Christ. Sonship represents Christ. Anywhere you see sonship in a spiritual context, it is Christ in the material of making. Sonship is Christ reduced as a material to make men. Sonship is Christ reduced as material to what? Make men. After God's desire. So when we go to when we go to the scripture and study, the Holy Spirit will look at the scripture and find out what in the Bible this week do we need to put into you so that it will be Christ that has been imparted into you. Are you getting the point now? And they will say, okay, it is Maybe Genesis chapter 2 verse, verse 17, if there is anything like that. So the Holy Spirit will so emphasize Genesis chapter 2 verse 17 that it will become a material with which your inner man is now constituted with. It is not just a scripture to quote and believe. It is something that you are now made up of. It is a component part of your making. Hey! You didn't hear me. Nonetheless, I will continue. So when a man comes in... So after me, in, into Christ. When you are in Christ, you need to be made up of Christ. Beyond the individuals being made up of Christ, the scripture said that there is a demand on the body to hold the head. What does it mean to hold the head? Pastor Chimobi. What does it mean for you to hold the head? That's a metaphor. So after me, a metaphor. What does it mean to hold the head? So that the fullness of the head can fill the body. Are you getting the point? Even the body needs to hold the head 
so that it can be constituted with that with which the head is made up of. So the head is already a, a template of constitution. When the body submits to the head, the Holy Spirit draws from the resources of constitution from the head and builds up the body. First thing that the Holy Spirit does when it comes to the place of building in the body is that he brings the material that is sourced from the head. And the first thing he does is to judge all other material that is within the body. And then do an evacuation first. That means before God builds, he judges. Has God not judged you before? If he has not judged you, you have not made progress. Many times, the proof that you are even making progress is that God judged you today, self. If it has been long, let me tell you what it means that God judged you. Huh? Have you prayed and ascended, did mighty thing in the spirit? And God told you, Kai, as a sister, told you, Kai, that your cloth is too tight. You didn't hear it when you were on the ground. As you keep ascending to, in fact, let me tell you, there are measures in life and the things that the Holy Spirit will demand from you as a principle. Life has a principle. When it comes, there are things it judges away. You are not with me. When we say that God filled you with life, it means that he judged away everything that is dead and sin that doesn't repre that there are things that are not components, makeup. They are not part of the makeup of life. So when life comes before he builds, he judges them away. So when life comes and notice that sleep, sleep is not part of what he wants to build. Are you getting the point? He judges sleep. Not that you will never sleep, but he wants you to come to the point where you conquer sleep. You now sleep as a necessity. Not you put a bed a tower. In a kumora. Huh? Man of God. Um, then I'll go. Happen can kumora. <laughs> Write it that way. There is a law of life that abhors several things that is not bad before. When you keep pursuing God, and the more life, oh, the scripture said, narrow is the path that leads to what? Life. You have not entered the path of life. I saw the sister say, Lord, teach me the path of life. Is the path is straight. The reason why believers are doing many things in this generation is that few of them is treading the path of life. The day you start treading the path of life, you stop asking whether it's sin or not. You will, first of all, you, God will judge away everything that is sin and then take you into things that are not sin but are not component of life. In fact, God will keep judging and keep judging and keep judging and come to the point where things that were useful yesterday will no more be useful in the component oppression of life within your members. The constitution of God after the order of God's demand on you today. No more needs what God used yesterday. I remember when we were small. How old are you, sir? Ah, you are still young. When you have baby, you should be about 40. How old are you? Ah, all of you are young. Oh. Jesus. When we are young, there is a car called Santana. Do you know Santana? Ha! I've confirmed you are young. Do you know Santana? That means you are older than them. How old are you? Eh? Uh, no wonder. You have to be up to 30 to really remember. Except your father is a, was a millionaire. There is a, a car called Santana. Do you know it? Your father must be very rich. Either you are old or your father is rich. Or your brother is rich. Santana. We used to call it Santana Okobo. Sometimes it's Santana Okobo. I didn't hear you. Sometimes it's Santana Okobo. It's actually Volkswagen Santana. Jesus. The mouth is like fish. How many of you remember that? the mouth is, is like fish? Do you know it, Pastor Boy? I know you know it. The mouth is like fish. Jesus Christ. If he's passing the street, all of us will be running. We say, Santana, this one is my own. Don't take it. It's my own. I will colonize it. 
if you bring Santana, I, if you give my enemy Santana, I will not even allow my enemy to take Santana now. As good as Santana was and all of us converted it yesterday, according to the labors of God in life or, and by life. Say after me, in life, in life. By, life. by life. In life, in life. By, life. By, life. by life. Never forget, in life, by life, Santana is no more a needed commodity in building. He served yesterday, today is an abomination. Something that was so useful in the days that we are yonder now is an abomination. I can tell you now. I picked up some worship songs that we used to ascend like 15 years ago. How I many of you, you are like me? Oh? Some worship, those days, if I listen to it, I will be ascending. I will, I will just be there. I listen to it. I say, how did this thing even move me? It's because you were carnal. When people, when they cross deals on men, what you call worship song will not serve anymore. You will find out that within the economy of life that powers God's purposes in your life now, that this kind of thing is not a needed commodity. Look at what you are dancing to. Look at what you, the, oh my God, you don't know life. When you know life, it will judge many things in you. For it to have a free course, he will tell you that this thing served yesterday. Yeah, it is not bad, but according to the levels of life within your ecosystem, within your ministry, you need to cut off this. Cut it off. Cut it off. It is not. Cut it off. We are telling him, but I love this lady. I love her voice. That's not what we are saying. We are saying that if you journey there, you will not know that the lifestyle that the lady has succumbed to two years after she sang the song is still releasing an echo, echoes of death through that song. You don't know what I'm saying. A man can sing a mighty song that blessed us, but after 10 years, he has descended the, the size of Sheol and he came up there with the shadow of death, casted it over his songs and messages. And men that journey there will find themselves in limbo. When they journey into the realm, they will be in limbo. They won't know whether they are in the good side or on the bad side. They are just in limbo. They don't know what is happening to them. Then the Holy Ghost will come and march and say, stop. You didn't know why he said stop. Because everything looks as if it's okay. It is the judgings of life. It has the ability to tell you where to stay and where to live. Don't ask him, is he wrong? Do you know what is wrong? Brothers and sisters, should I even tell you? <laughs> when you grow in God, you grow beyond right and wrong. The reason why grace came is to teach us that God is beyond right and wrong. It's not necessarily to make people not to sin. God is trying to tell you that he can decide what is right. So even when a man sinned, he said, take grace. Do we, all of us know you sin? All of us know that you what? Sin. What does grace teach? That there is a higher level of God's judgment beyond right and wrong. Based on right and wrong, you have erred. Based on grace, you are accepted. Now, if you advance in this philosophy, it also means that there is a realm in the pursuit of righteousness that is beyond right and wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying now? What we pursue in God as matured entities, what we pursue in God in the deeper life is not what is right and wrong. It is what is life. Say so after me, not right and wrong, but what is life. So if you play a song, I will not ask you, is it a bad song? What of the lyrics? I will ask you, is there life in it? If you teach a teaching, even if you are doctrinally correct, but you are disseminating death, it means that you are not correct. Even though what you said can be right. You can be a messenger of Satan, disseminating death with something that looks as if it's right, yet it is death that is ministered. Because God is beyond your right and wrong. Are you getting the point? It is in kingdom context, it is authority that, oh Jesus. I will continue tomorrow. Let's pray for one minute. I have a lot to say. Say, Lord, help me. Beyond the words of man, let me enter into the experience of this teaching. Can you pray for 30 seconds? Pray.
In Jesus' name we pray. Let's lift up our offering. Let's stand to our feet. Lift up your offerings. Raise it up. Just lift up your offerings. Raise it up. Let's stand to our feet. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give. We ask, Lord, that you bless every giver. And those that we don't have, we ask that you make provisions for them. The resources we abound so that we can give you next time. In Jesus' name we pray. So those following us online, our account details are projected on the screen. Please, ushers, help us. Please wait, wait. Help us project our flyers. Okay. So, the as our father already said yesterday, this is Ekiti Apostolic Invasion. We're bringing the Apostolic Invasion. And our father, some persons have been calling and asking, is Apostle coming? Is Apostle coming? Please answer them and tell them yes. So, Many other persons will be uploaded in this flyer. And the date is on the third and fourth Friday and Saturday of May 2024. And it's going to be at ROCF Auditorium, Ekiti State University. At Ekiti. God bless you in the name of Jesus. So please help us upload. Wait, listen, listen. Up, Ghana Apostolic Invasion. Kumasi is going to be on the 13th and the 14th of July. 13th and 14th of July. And Accra is going to be on the 20th and 21st of July. Father is going to be in Ghana, both in Kumasi and in Accra. And he has already promised to visit some other institutions around. Please, um, what do we have? How many days to pray and prophetic now? How many days? How many days, please? Huh? Is it 11 days or 10 days? How many? 10th to 14th of April 2024 is our prayer and prophetic conference. And the theme is what? What's the theme? You can see the lineup of great men of God that are going to be with us in that conference. Please support this conference if you have not supported many persons are yet to register please register support the conference and our account details will be projected alongside and if you're in the planning group we share the account details up there in that planning group so that you can be able to make your remittance at every point point. and if you have any question you are trying to invite people from different campuses please you can reach out to us via that contact and we give you all the information and details you need god bless you tomorrow by 5 p.m we'll meet again Please greet five persons. Greet five persons. Greet five persons.